Hello everybody, uh, I am Gillian Stewart, I'm a bookbinder and I'm coming to you from my studio in Glasgow today where I work. Um, being a bookbinder means that I make books by hand and it's a bit of an unusual trade, so there are not that many people who will employ somebody to be a bookbinder, so that means that I work for myself, I run my own business. Um, which is fantastic but challenging at times. Um, so what I'm going to talk to you about today is a little, little bit about how I got from school and uh, through university to running a business because that was a weird and wonderful path that uh, wasn't always straightforward and didn't always feel like it was leading somewhere. So I'm going to share my screen and have some nice images to show you. Okay, so that's me working away. Um, so bookbinding is a, is a craft that's quite technical, but it's also quite creative. Um, and the creative side is always something that I knew I wanted to work with. So when I was in high school, um, art was really my favorite course, art and technical drawing. Um, and I didn't really know what I ever wanted to do, but I knew that I wanted to get to art school. <laughs> so that was always the goal. Um, but while I was in high school and sort of aiming towards getting to art school, um, it was quite a difficult time for me, to be honest. It wasn't my favourite time in the world. Um, I ended up leaving home when I was 16. And right when I was about to do all my exams. Um, so I listened to my gut at that point and decided I'm going to take a year out, um, which was very scary. Everybody thought, oh, my God, she's never going to go back to school again. What's going to happen? But um, I got a job in a call centre, which was quite challenging at times, but um, looking back on it, I actually gave me a lot of good skills that I now use in my business. Um, and that's something that I've tried to think about through the journey that I'll be telling you is where all these different things don't seem to link to what I do now, actually help me to run my business um, and have the life that I want. So working in that call centre, dealt with lots of people angry at the business <laughs> and would just shout at me, um, which has enabled me to be good at dealing with difficult customers now or communicating clearly. Um, so had this year out and went back to finish my sixth year, managed to get through my exams and then went to art school um, where I focused on illustration. Um, but really got into making books. So this was the first time that I had had really come across book binding and thought, what is this? This is amazing. I love it. It's creative and it's technical. Um, so yeah, art school was, it was fantastic. Great experience. Um, met lots of creative, wonderful people that I'm still in touch with and really found that I'd found my sort of corner of the world. Um, but yeah, in third year, um, in Scotland we have four years so in third year I um, life got in the way I broke up with a boyfriend that I've been with for years and years and had a bit of a wobble I was like oh my god who am I where am I going what am I doing uh, and again took another year out between third and fourth year and again everybody around me panicked and thought what are you doing but um I, I was really listening to my gut and I knew that for me, the best thing to do was to take a year out and do something other than focus on studies. So I um, had been working in pubs and waitressing quite a lot. I had managed to save up some money and I went and volunteered in a few different countries. So uh, completely unrelated to art, I taught English for a little while in India. That's me squeezed into a little tuk-tuk. And I worked on farms in Norway, looking after sheep. That's me in the middle, hanging onto the horns of um, that sheep there. And um, milk cows and learned how to make cheese and grow vegetables and a lot of things that were completely different to what I had been doing. Um, and that might seem like a bit of a detour, but actually those experiences again, taught me how to communicate, how to meet people, um, really grew my confidence because I've been quite shy, but having to go on your own to a different country and integrate into a different group 
was actually really, really good experience for me. Um, and one of the best things that I could have done. Um, and it also let me think about what I wanted to do. And I realized that yes, I did want to go back and finish art school. Um, I think it's also good practice to put yourself in difficult situations and realize that you can figure it out. Um, so there were times where I'd missed a flight in India to get somewhere and I had to rummage around in Delhi to find the right train to get me to where I needed to go, all of which was terrifying, but dealing with that myself, realizing that I could do it has given me a lot of strength when I meet challenges in my current job. So um, everything's a good experience. Um, so I did graduate art school and um, what tends to happen when somebody graduates art school is that you panic and go, oh my God, what next? <laughs> Which definitely happened. Um, I took on more shifts in the pub that I was working in and um, didn't know what to do, but I eventually managed to get an internship in an art gallery in Orkney. Um, it was a funded internship. So I was paid to, to learn about art handling and how to put up an exhibition and, and things like that. And while I didn't end up going into exhibitions or working in an art gallery, um, one thing that has really stood me in great stead in my current business is that um, the gallery wanted me to run workshops. So I was running creative workshops for the public and for young people. And that's something I had never done before, but something that I found out that I was quite good at and that I now do a lot of in my current job. Um, a lot of makers might not make enough money just from the thing that they make, but they'll have to take on to work teaching at the side to sort of help make enough money. But that's actually something that I really enjoy. I love working with people. Um, so although I didn't end up working in a gallery for my job, this part was actually really, really useful. Um, and then I worked for an organization called BSO, Voluntary Service Overseas, where they send UK volunteers to, to different countries to work alongside um, young people in that country. So I went to Tanzania and worked in education projects. Again, completely different from art. And you can see how this story is getting windy around there. But um, I ended up, people kept asking me to make the posters for, for community days or for events that were happening. And um, I think that's when I, I realized that I had something that I was quite good at and that not everyone could do. That sounds a bit arrogant, but what I mean is that um, I was in a group of all sorts of different abilities and people with different strengths, whereas before I'd always been around creative people that were like me. But when I was around different types of people, um, not everybody could draw a poster. And I realized that, that was something that um, was quite valuable and maybe a bit different in the way that everybody has their own strengths. So being around different people that were different from me allowed me to see what, um, you know, what I was good at and what made me special, what my strengths were. And I think that's really important um, is to, to find ways to discover what you're good at and to recognize in yourself, that, you know, I'm good at this and maybe that's something I should focus on. Um, and also, again, just fantastic chance to travel. Um, yeah, VSO as an organization are, are really worth looking into. Actually, they take young folk um, and partner them with organizations around the world. Um, and that was all funded um, and great experience. So I came back to Glasgow eventually. <laughs> and um, I was, uh, I think I was working in another call center then just to, to find money to pay rent. And I managed to get a traineeship in a book binding company in Glasgow. Um, it was just advertised on Facebook and within a week of, of working there after I got the job, I thought, oh my God, this is what I want to do. Um, I really finally found like I'd found my thing and it was a huge relief. Um, as I say, it's very creative and very technical. Um, so it ticked a lot of boxes for me. Um, but I quickly realized that I was only going to be able to be so creative with it. Um, a lot of the work that we did was very traditional, like these images here, and um, that wasn't really what I was interested in. Um, so, so after talking to them and realizing that I wasn't going to be able to be 
very creative in the role. I left and panicked, made this face for about three months. <laughs> Got a job in a cafe in my neighbourhood. Um, and I thought I wouldn't come back to bookbinding, but actually I found myself buying equipment and getting a little studio space with another artist. Um, and I got involved with the Princess Trust who, who have a programme for young folk who want to start a business. And I kind of ended up by accident with a little business on the side. Um, and I, yes, yeah, so I was working with this little studio space. I got in touch with my old art school and asked, is there anybody who would like to um, learn about bookbinding and paper arts? So I ended up going back and doing a little bit of teaching with one of the courses there. And um, that led to some more workshops and more art venues. And, um, and then I got my first client. And this was a photographer um, who happened to live in my neighborhood and go to the coffee shop that I worked in. So I made his coffee and we got chatting. And I said, I'm a bookbinder. And he said, oh my gosh, I need someone to make some books for me. Um, so I'd kind of thought that the, the coffee shop job was a bit of a dead end, but actually I got my first clients through it and that led to more clients. Um, and that started to happen, word of mouth started to get out. So I ended up getting more and more clients and moved into a slightly bigger studio space and eventually forced myself to go on social media. <laughs> I made this book of um, Robert McFarlane, who's one of my favorite writers, and I tagged him on Instagram and he saw it and he bought it from me, which was amazing. That was such a boost of confidence to me. And I started to pick up um, work for other artists around Scotland. And because my own aim is, my own focus is quite creative, I ended up picking up creative work. Um, and that led to more of the sort of work that I want to do. So I started to get some really fun commissions for different artists. And then I got a scholarship from the Queen Elizabeth Scholarship Trust who fund crafts um, in the UK for, for makers who have a bit of experience but, but need to get further and can't get further because they don't have the training but they don't have the funds to get there. So um, this was a real game changer because there weren't any courses, well, there aren't any courses in bookbinding in the UK. So this scholarship, um, really totally changed things for me. Um, I started to make books like this one here, which is full leather, uses lots of different techniques, which are quite advanced and which I hadn't had the opportunity to learn before. So um, I made this while learning with a bookbinder in Scotland that was funded through Christ. And in 2019, I eventually had so much work from bookbinding that I quit my part-time job, which was one of the scariest things I've ever done. But, you know, somebody told me that you can always get another job if you want. But if you've got a chance while your business is growing and while you're doing something that you like, you just have to go for it. Um, and I ended up getting a job making Idris Elba's wedding um, invitations. So that's what these boxes were. And then I got another job making books for the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia. And then I got a solo exhibition in an art centre in Glasgow. So that decision to quit the part-time job and really focus on my business was a good one because I wouldn't have been able to do all of these things. And a lot of these came about just through um, promoting myself on social media, but also through um, just being nice to talk to. That sounds really basic, but through my time spent being a waitress and as a barmaid, you talk to a lot of people, you have to be nice and welcoming. And I think that those skills that I learned really helped me to get these jobs because as a solo maker, you're dealing with other people one-to-one. -one. And um, if I had been rude or unfriendly or difficult to talk to, or if I wasn't communicating clearly, I might not have got these jobs. Um, so the skills that I learned through being waitressing and, and things like that have really helped me to get some jobs that have been very important to me. Some more images of Bookie Books. Um, 2020 pandemic happened <laughs> um, and I kind of had to change my business. Uh, but to be honest, I got a bit of a rest, which was nice. Um, focused on more creative work that I really wanted to make for myself. And also became a bit more commercial in terms of having products that people could easily buy rather than coming to me for a one-off book. People could just buy on my website, so it was a lot easier. And um, 
yeah, now I've I've started to get work that's a bit more advanced and um Yeah, these are just my, just my books. And uh, this is a ping pong bat that I was asked to make as part of an exhibition um, in Glasgow where lots of different makers were invited to take part. And um, it was really fun because I think when you, when you are in a craft or a very niche industry like I am, you can forget that there's other types of creativity going on around you. And this exhibition was a good chance to be part of something that a lot of different types of people were involved in, so lots of different makers. So I think it's always important to keep your uh, eyes open to see what else is going on um, and what other sort of creative friendships you can make. Um, so here we are um, in 2022. Um, the work that I'm making is getting more advanced and I'm getting commissions for more um, involved books and projects, which is really very exciting, um, including uh, jobs for clients in America, which is incredible. Um, and this is the space that I work in now. So this is where I'm coming to you from today. Um, I work here by myself and I've managed to pick up bits of equipment from you know, second hand or big borrower steel <laughs> or eBay. Um, and the space, the space around me really reflects me. I think it's it's not just bits of equipment, it's also artwork that I like and that inspires me and it keeps me going. Um, so yeah, as you can see, the story to get here is not straightforward. I don't know where I'm going to be going next, um, but if, if I won the lottery, I'd still be doing what I'm doing, which I think is the goal. Um, I'll never be rich, but I've got enough to get by on and that's enough for me, to be honest. Um, so I think what's, what the takeaway for this would be, um, you know, it's, it's very easy to feel lost and like we don't know where we're going and that's okay. Um, just find what you're good at, listen to your gut when it's telling you something, um, and to remain curious because if, if you're in an industry that you're curious about and that you want to learn more about that's going to keep you going when it's tough and when there's not a lot of money coming in um, and when you're tired from working a lot um, if it's something that you want to learn more about that'll, that'll, that'll keep you going um, so that's me that's where you can find me if you want to look at some more books um, if you have any questions about book bending or the industry or crafts um, I think that crafts is a fantastic industry to be a part of. Um, and though it can be difficult, it's, it's varied and it's challenging and it's a fantastic community. We're all quite good at supporting each other um, because we work alone. So that's another another strength that we have. Um, okay, thank you very much. <laughs>